Hi, I'm Richa Devedi on New India Junction. The Western world is facing dire economic situation, arising primarily out of the faulty economic policies they followed post the COVID-19 pandemic. The Western world solution was to spend recklessly and splurge endlessly. The result is that today entire Europe and USA are facing record inflation with some even breaching four to five decades old records. UK is even staring at a balance of payments crisis and possible recession. India adopted a different approach of targeted support to needy beneficiaries instead of random cash distribution. Result? Fastest growing major economy in the world and controlled inflation. But today, we are here to discuss the pearls of wisdom of celebrated economists and some experts who advised India in 2020 to follow the exact route that West followed and even slammed Prime Minister Modi for not doing so. With their advice being proven spectacularly wrong, wonder what they are doing now. First up, Nobel laureate Abhijit Banerjee. In a chat with Rahul Gandhi during the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, he stated that the Indian government should take a clue from the United States where the Donald Trump administration had announced a stimulus package equivalent to 10% of the country's GDP. In another interview, he stated, and I quote, I'm not sure the government is calling it right. Is it possible to spend an extra 2% of on this right now? Probably many countries have borrowed 10 times that amount. So why not? Then he went on to say that a lot of us have been saying that we need a stimulus package. That's what the United States is doing, Japan is doing, Europe is doing. We really haven't decided on a large enough stimulus package. We are still talking about 1% of GDP. The US has gone for 10% of GDP. Now we move on to another star economist, Raghuram Rajan, who said that government of India's plan to conserve resources for a future stimulus is self-defeating. Now we look at the words of another economist, Kaushik Basu, who said, India needs large fiscal stimulus. He too pushed for India going for a large fiscal roll-up. Then we look at India's former chief economic advisor, Arvind Subramanian. He too joined the league, he too joined the chorus and said, therefore the trade-off for countries like India, it is only fair and appropriate that it should err more on the side of prioritizing the present and preserving livelihoods and so on. This was not it. The business press too played its part. There were several opinions pushed in editorials about how India should be going for a large fiscal package. This is an opinion piece in the Mint, which stated it's time to go for it's time to go for broke with a ten trillion dollar plan. The editorial stated this would be a gamble, no doubt, as inflation could prove costly later but the odds of India's success will only lengthen as more time is lost. Whatever has to be done must be done fast. Now, if we look at what was happening simultaneously across the world, the Secret Service had stated that the COVID-19 relief fraud potentially totals $100 billion. This is what had happened where a lot of Western nations were facing uh, Frauds had come up. So this was what was going on in countries which had gone for large fiscal packages. On the other hand, the Indian government's strategy was to wait, watch and then respond, as stated by Principal Economic Advisor Sanjeev Sanyal. Instead of taking hasty, irreversible policy decisions, the Modi government stuck to taking a calibrated approach, despite tremendous pressure from experts. The priority was to secure the needy sections of the society through food provisions and cash transfers to stabilize MSMEs by credit and liquidity extension. The fiscal stimulus doled out by the Indian government was done with a disciplined approach. Other nations that went for big fiscal stimulus with simultaneous lockdowns are witnessing unprecedented inflation.
Another sane voice that emerged was that of economist Arvind Panagriya, who in April 2020 advised that the government needs to resist those calls and take a more measured approach. He also mentioned that many in the West believe that spending will save the economy in the wake of COVID-19. Debt must be kept under control if economies are to survive the crisis and that India is showing early signs of getting it right. There is no free lunch. If you are going to monetize the deficit, that will have some impact on macro fundamentals. We cannot pretend to do policy as if there are no costs. India's chief economic advisor K. Subramaniam stated in May 2020 itself. In September 2020, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said that the government is open to another round of stimulus measures and that the centre will come out with fresh growth and budgetary estimates for the COVID-19 pandemic hit 2020-21. She further stated that every time the government has announced one, it has been after much deliberation and aimed at specific sections. Likewise, Principal Economic Advisor Sanjeev Sanyal in October 2020 voiced that the government recognizes the need for further stimulus at an appropriate time to perk up demand in the economy. India tied its response to vaccine rollout as early as July 2020. India's Chief Economic Advisor K. Subramaniam had stated that any measure to increase consumption needs to be in sync with the availability of a vaccine against the coronavirus as in the absence of the vaccine, uncertainty will prevail and the public will differ consumption. Meanwhile, Larry Summers, top economic advisor to former US President Barack Obama, blasted the $1.9 trillion coronavirus stimulus package signed by President Biden, stating it was the least responsible economic policy in 40 years. On the other hand, Indian economist Dr. Arvind Virvani maintained from the early onset of the pandemic that fiscal stimulus have no positive outcome, instead can do great harm by diverting the government's attention from pandemic problems during the lockdown and later when it moves towards normalization. Similarly, economist Surjit Bhalla stated that India has not only structured its stimulus response correctly, it had gone a step further by using the crisis to implement important economic reforms. Time and again, response of a certain section of economic experts and policy advisors has revolved around mistrust. They have made suggestions completely bereft of ground reality yet somehow managed to escape the media's scrutiny, which in any other case doesn't shy away from discrediting individuals. In this case, during a once-in-a-century pandemic, several experts peddled their views, creating tremendous pressure through the same channels, adding to the chorus to dole out large fiscal stimulus, arm-twisting the government to listen to it or deal with chaos that they so easily furthered. About time, such experts should be held accountable for the views, policies and ideas that they propagate. Let us know in the comments below if you found this video insightful. Until next time, this is Richa Devedi signing off. Dhanivad and Namaste.